I'm quite often asked about the materials that I use for watercolour painting, so I think it'll be a good idea to just explain a few of the materials. For example, let's begin with paints. Here we have a cobalt blue, cadmium red deep, and a cadmium yellow pale. They're the primary colours, and they're a good start. Something else you could add to your paint list is a cerulean blue. That's really beautiful pale blue. This is a Payne's Grey. It's ultramarine blue and lamp black mixed together in the tube. I find this really useful. Another colour that's quite useful is a sepia. It's like a chocolate brown colour and I use it in many of my watercolour demonstrations on YouTube. Also, a raw sienna. Now obviously, these are just a selection that I like to use. And you can get many, many more paints. Here's the same paints, but quite a selection in there. These are Windsor & Newton by Cotman watercolours. And I find these to be very useful. But you, you choose the colour that you like the best to use. Just be careful as a little tip of this colour. This is a Viridian, which is an extremely beautiful colour, but it's very vivid. It's a very um, intense green. And often the beginner will use the... Viridian and they'll paint Viridian green trees and grid, Viridian green flowers but really the best thing to do is to make your own greens and that would be blue and yellow it makes a good green to start with. You may also be aware of pans of colour P-A-N-S. This is a box or tin of colours with pans in. Here we have again that very intense green. Just be careful, maybe you could make your own green with a yellow and some blue mixed together. These are very easy to use. Instead of, with my palette of course, let's introduce that. Just a round palette with ten wells can get this from many shops there it's not very expensive so let's see let's introduce also a pipette just really like a straw for sucking up some color from my water pot and putting some color out in my palette so also I like to use two pots of water one that I can keep clean and one that's going to get slightly, um, slightly dirty with the colours. So two pots of water. I will be putting the list of materials I'm explaining now in the description below. Brushes. I like to use nylon brushes. These are really suitable for the size of painting that I like to do which tends to be A5 size or let's have a look I've got some here this is A5 size or it's 20 by 15 centimeters 8 by 6 inches and it's quite a thick card. If I come close to the camera, you may be able to see, see a slight texture on the paper. This paper is made from 100% cotton. And the name of the paper is Bockingford. If I wanted to make a colour from these, simply wet my brush and then wipe through the colour. And keep doing that until you get the intensity of the colour that you need. So that's taken four, four wipes 
through the pan to make that colour. Shall we test it on a little piece of paper and see what it looks like? Your testing paper is very important. Clean my brush. How do I use the tubes of paint then? Well, these are soft, rather like a toothpaste. Instead of wiping through here, I would just take some of that on my brush, scoop it up, make myself beautiful red. Now I'm mixing around here about 20 times because the colour is still sticking onto the edge of the brush there. So let's give it a really good mix and hold the palette still while you're mixing it. Let's try it on the paper. It's a beautiful red. Cadmium red deep. If you want it stronger you would add some more and it will go a little bit stronger. So that's how I mix colours. Let's introduce one or two other materials you might need. What about an eraser? That's always handy to have, isn't it? When you're making your first sketch. I like this is just a 15 centimetre rule, handy if you need to make a straight line. We've spoken about the brushes. This brush is a number three, going to a fine point. And this brush is a number six, going to a fine point. I like to tape my paper down to a board. So I'm just using an ordinary roll of masking tape, like this. This is Harry's masking tape, but you can use any masking tape that you find suitable. And I simply tape it down. Sometimes what will happen if you don't pay, uh, take the paper down, the paper will tend to bend and buckle. But it will dry flat, so you don't really need to worry about that. But I like to tape it down. It just keeps it on a nice, uh, even surface. I'm using a little bit of wood, wooden board here. And I think that's pretty much everything that we need. Oh, I know, we do need a pencil. This is a HB pencil. I use this often when I'm teaching in school, in primary school. Another useful pencil, pencil to have is a 2B pencil. It's a little bit softer and a little bit darker. That's a handy one to have. And also, you will get through quite a lot of kitchen roll kitchen paper. So I will list all these in the description below. Hopefully you will be able to buy yourself some paints and paintbrushes and an eraser and watercolour paper. So this one is Bockingford, as I said before. It's B-O-C-K-I-N-G. Bockingford watercolour paper. You can buy it in a pad, or you can buy it in a sheet. I 
I hope this is help, helping you and experiment. The best way to learn is simply to experiment and to practice. Happy painting.